Good morning all. On my journey back into Arduino for 2020, so far I've got an OLED connected to an Arduino Nano and I've got a millis count on the display. And the code for that that I'm using is this. I'm using the U8X8 library to drive the OLED. Here's my constructor call. I'm using the 128 by 64 SSD 1306 no name uh, constructor call with hardware I squared C. I've called my object OLEG. And then I simply do an OLEG begin and a set font. I'm using this font because it's nice and big. And then I, in my loop, I just uh, set the cursor position to zero, zero and print millis and then put a half second delay after it. Uh, then I took uh, a temperature and humidity sensor, this one, the SI7021, add that onto the I squared C bus, trying not to touch the little sensor. So that goes on there, that should do it. Let's load in the code that I finalized on for this combination. So here it is with OLED and temperature and humidity sensor. And we've got a humidity uh, reading there with a little percent sign and a temperature reading with a little Celsius sign. I'm just gonna blow on the sensor. See if that changes. Well, it didn't change much, but it is creeping up to 51%. Let's look at the code for this combination of devices on the I squared C bus. And the code for that is this. Now we've got two libraries here, the U8X8 and this one, I squared C SI7021. Now in this journey back into Arduino, I'm only going to be using libraries which are registered in the library manager. So nothing esoteric, nothing that you have to sort of manually add. Okay, two constructor calls, the OLED, which I've called OLEG, and the SI7021, which I've called Simon, for obvious reasons. Couple of static floats, humidity and temperature. So we start the OLED, or begin the OLEG, and initialize the Simon. Uh, once again, set the fonts. Now slightly uh, change that. I had just the numerals before to show millis. This time I've increased it to R, the R version of the font, so that I can use the percent and C characters. And in the loop, we get humidity, get temperature and trigger a measurement. And then on the OLED, set the cursor to zero, zero and print humidity and the percent sign. Set the cursor to zero, three, which is a bit lower down on the display. Print the temperature and print a, an uppercase C, 200 milliseconds of delay. So that's as far as I got in the last video. Uh, the humidity and temperature sensor and the OLED. Oh, and in actual fact, I made this PCB, didn't I? So they'd all look very pretty on here. Let's shove the bits on here. And it all looks very pretty laid out on here. Now I'm not gonna attempt to power this up because these connections are all loose because I didn't make this PCB uh, able to work as a socket. Now I think the best idea for that were these staggered pins uh, because to my mind that means that the further you push this in the more it will lock into place So I think I'll have a go at that for the next version of this board However, what I need to do now and this is because of my shed problem Is I need to split the sensor and the display up by about 75 feet the sensor with an Arduino needs to go into the shed and the display with an Arduino can stay here in the workshop now, if you've not seen the problem I'm having with my shed, which is basically damp and mold, um, go to the video, which I'll put in the description below, on my second channel. And if you could do me a favor and subscribe to that second channel, if you're not already subscribed, that would be really cool because I try, I'd like to try and get the subscribers on my second channel above 10,000, which will massively help my LBRY rankings more about that in a later video. So this is where it gets a bit tricky because I need to introduce this. It's the NRF24L01 
plus data transceiver. And that means that the Arduino with its humidity sensor and a transmitter can live in the shed. And I'll probably power that from a five volt power bank. And then the Arduino with a receiver and the OLED can sit here on my desk in the workshop and I can remotely see what the humidity in the shed is. Now I haven't used one of these NRF 24L01 Plus modules for a long, long time. And the last time I looked at this, I was using the Maniac Bug library, it had to be manually installed. That had issues and I went for the Greg Copeland fork of that library and that solved the issues. And that's about as far as I got. But starting again, I now need to use libraries which are in the library manager and the one that looks most promising is the TMRH20. So we've really got to start again. Um, now I did find in my box of bits this. This is a board into which the uh, NRF 24L01 Plus plugs and it does a couple of things. It provides 3.3 volts via this regulator because this is a 3.3 volt chip although uh, its inputs, its data inputs are 5 volt tolerant. So that solves that problem. And then this plugs into the female sockets on the side of an Arduino Uno. And I don't have an Uno, but I do have this board, which takes my Nano and makes it slightly Uno shaped. And so I've soldered in um, a six way header onto the edge of here. Uh, on the pins which do SPI, which is 13, 12, 11, and then two others of your choice. And obviously I've gone for 10 and nine. And so that very neatly plugs into there. And that connects the NRF module to my Arduino. So what I wanna try and do today is get this Arduino Nano on this little baseboard and attempt to get this transmitting data and then attempt to receive it. Now for the receiver, I'm actually going to use this temporarily. This is my wearable. Now you probably haven't seen this for a long, long time, but this is a sandwich of, well, this is a wireless Qi charger. There's a LiPo there. There's the NRF module. There's a Pro Mini, there's an OLED. This is actually uh, an SPI OLED, I think. There's also a LiPo fuel gauge, Max 17043, if I'm not mistaken. Now I've charged this up and it does appear to work. So let's plug it in. Now the only thing I've got to do with this, and I'm using an old Adafruit display library, I can't push that plug fully in, otherwise the connection's bad. But yeah, that's working. You can see that the battery is reasonably well charged. And it's got stuff on the display, but it's not actually receiving any data. So the challenge today will be to get data sent from this NRF module to the wearable. Now this little transmission tower, um, it has all the wires to take SPI signals and take them up onto this board and then subsequently onto the NRF. Uh, it doesn't have power, so what I'm gonna do is attach power with this uh, red and brown and that can go down onto these pins which I think have 5 volts and 0 volts so I'll just do that. So I'm not sure if you can see this but that's marked ground and VCC there somewhere uh, and I've got a 5 volts and a 0 volts on here. So that's going to put power to the regulator there that'll take it down to 3.3 that'll power up this unit and I've got my data connections there. So that's all ready to go to transmit data, hopefully, to the wearable. Now, I'm going to install a library for the NRF 24L01 Plus. So I've opened the library manager and I'm gonna type NRF24 to find the library for the NRF 24L01 Plus, and there are various libraries for this, but the one I'm gonna go for, this one is very tempting, NRF Lite by Dave Parson, because it says very little code, but I'm gonna go for this one, RF24 by TMRH20, and there's a very good reason for that, but let's hit install. 
and install that library. And um, that is probably going to be quite slow because of my OBS running at the same time as Arduino. Right, that's installed. Now, if I click more info here, that I think takes me to GitHub for this library. So let's take a look at that. So here we are at the library. Now, if I click on, yes, if I click on this RF24H and actually look at the source code for this library, you can see here right at the top, copyright 2011 J. Colleys, uh Maniac Bug. So the point is this TMRH20 library is actually based on the original Maniac Bug code. And this is very useful because it means that my original example file should still run. So I'm just going to close the library manager because that library is now installed. Now there is, of course, an example for um, this TMRH20 library. I have to come right down to the bottom. RF24. And there's one called Getting Started. So I'll open that up and maximize it. But it's quite long. Let me reduce the size of the font with Control minus. And I'm going to have to go quite far because this is quite a lot. <laughs> oh, I seem to have uh, reduced it so it's unreadably small. But this is quite a long file and it's complicated. Let me just go slightly bigger than that because I can't read it now. Like so. Because I think what the guy here is trying to do is work on the basis that these transceivers are nodes and that either one can be a transmitter or receiver. But I'd like to work on the basis that I dedicate one of the NRFs to a transmitter role and the other one to a receiver role. So I don't have to do this business down here of changing roles via serial commands where you type T to convert it into transmit and R to convert it into receive. I just want the minimum code I can get away with to get the transmitter to transmit. So let's dig up my old transmitter file from about five or six years ago. And here it is. This is, uh, I called it a very brief name, NRFTX. Now it includes UHG-Lib. So I'm going to strip out everything related to UHG-Lib because there was obviously an OLED um, as well as my uh, uh, transmitter NRF module. So let's delete that. And we don't need the UHG lib constructor call. So let's delete that. Uh, oh, that's fairly unrecognizable, isn't it? And I don't need um, a begin for that. I don't appear to have one. Okay. And I don't need the picture loop stuff here. Uh, in the main loop. So let's take that out. Now I'm trying to scale this down to the absolute minimum so that I can have it fairly large font and put it all on one page so that you can see it. Then I will compile it and then I'll upload it to the transmitter and see if it works. Yes, I found this in amongst all this other stuff, which is another of these transmitter towers. This one has an OLED on it, so I think the idea was um, this transmits stuff to the wearable. The wearable then sent a few things back in the acknowledgement packet, and then this would display. I've got a feeling it sent the battery voltage. So at the transmitter, you could see how well the battery on the wearable was holding out. That, I think, was what was going on. But for my transmitter, I don't need any OLED-related stuff, so I'm going to carry on stripping that out get it down to the most stripped down file I can. Now I think I can take this 9 and 10 which are definitions for the CE and CSN pins and actually just shove them in here. It'll certainly uh, make the code a lot less bulky so put 10 in there. And I've got a feeling defines are not really flavour of the month anymore. I think a long time ago they were uh, it was decided they weren't a great thing. I think you use static const now. Uh, anyway, let's take them out. Don't need them now because I've actually got those numbers in here. Right, now I can go a little bit bigger. 
try and make this as big and at the same time fit on one screen as possible so that we can see how it works. Now is there anything else I can take out? I need um, radio begin. The radio enable act payload is for the data that goes back the other way, but I'll leave that in for the moment. Uh, I need the radio open writing pipe, and the pipe is this five byte code. Um, but uh, the receiver has that same code, so I'll have to leave that unchanged. Couple of uh, variables here an int for packet count and a float for the battery voltage. Then I read a whole load of the analog pins and just sent all this data doing, uh, with a radio write out over the transmitter and then I read back the acknowledgement payload. Well we won't get too bogged down with that. I think for the moment that's about as far as I dare go. Um, I'll do a save as and give it a 2020 type name. So I've called that NRFTX temp 2020 and then when I finalize it I'll call it final but I'm actually going to go for a compile now which I'll compile and upload it'll fail because the tower isn't actually plugged in yet but I'd like to see that that at least compiles I'll come back because that's going to take ages right I'm not sure whether I'll get away with this but uh, while that's compiling I'll plug in my tower into the PC and uh, we'll see whether that code can go over onto the transmitter and then see if the receiver can receive its packets of data. I think the main thing you'll see is all these analog inputs. You'll see these numbers flickering around because the analog pins on here will just be floating. So I'll come back when that's all compiled and we'll see whether this is actually receiving anything. And uh, yes, that all worked. It compiled and uploaded to this and it is transmitting. And you can see on this display, we've got a whole bunch of analog values transmitting out here. And we've got a packet counter, which I think is local to this actually. I don't think that's being transmitted. Int one and int two, I think are being transmitted from here. So they're just integers. I can't quite remember what they are. But yes, that stuff is coming out from the transmitter and going to the receiver. Now what's interesting here is it means my original transmitter code, which is very simple, it's really just three instructions. Um, what were they again? Radio begin, radio open writing pipe and radio write. They're working with the TMRH20 library. That's the critical thing. So I can use a, a different library. I've never used that library before. But because it's based on the original Maniac bug code, my original transmit software works and it is going out to the receiver. Now I'm going to build a new receiver because I don't, um, I want to do it with uh, the U8X8 or maybe the U8G2 library to drive the OLED. Probably be an I squared C OLED. I'll probably put the OLED on this sort of board. Um, although I do quite like the wearable, but it's a bit of a mess, isn't it? But yeah, that's working. That's transmitting from there to there. Quite fun doing a range test now, wouldn't it? But let's see if we can optimize these, the transmitter code. Really, I can cut out all this analog transmit stuff, I suppose, and just cut it down to the absolute bare minimum where we can send one packet. Or possibly the other thing I could do is now try and get this humidity sensor on here because this after all is going to go in the shed and maybe try and transmit temperature and humidity data. Hmm, let's try that. So I found this four-way wire and I'm going to plug in the SI7021. Uh, orange is sort of the most VCC-ish kind of color. So we got orange for VIN, yellow, green, and blue for ground, SCL, and SDA. And I've noticed that on here, there are four pins, this other white connector, which are actually I squared C. We've got ground, VCC, SDA, and SCL. So there's gonna be some twisting involved. Let's get my sensor on there. Right, so um, the I squared C lines are plugged into there and they go to the sensor. So that's on there. Now that shouldn't interfere with the current transmit program. It stopped, of course, because I pulled the power. So let's plug that back 
in and the transmitter should fire back up once it's stopped polling the USB. And there it goes. So now what I want to do is put in the necessary code for measuring temperature and humidity and try and transmit that over to this wearable, if that's possible. Something interesting has happened here since I've plugged in the I squared C uh, of this sensor into A4 and A5. These have shot up to 1023. So is that because of the pull-up resistors uh, on those two lines? Yes, I think it must be. Because A4 and A5, and that's marked A4 and A5, now have pull-up resistors to VCC. Yes, that's why those will be showing 1023. Mmm, how exciting. Oh, this battery seems to be getting quite low. Is that, oh no, that's 3.8 volts, that's fine. I thought it said 3.00. Okay. So what do I need here to get the SI7021 to work? Well, I need this include. So let's copy that and paste it in here. Now, I don't think I need this include because it doesn't seem to be in the TMRH20 example. So that must be included in this. But anyway, I'm just going to comment that out because it doesn't seem to be necessary. Okay, what else do I need? I need a constructor call for the SI7021. Uh, now, can I squeeze it? Yeah, let's try that. Let's uh, copy that and paste it in. Uh, can you put two on one line? Yeah, you can. So I can paste it in there. But I will need a semicolon. Let's put a space in as well. So I create two objects, the radio and the SI7021. What else do I need? I need a couple of floats for humidity and temperature for when I read them. So let's have those. Let's copy that. Uh, why is that constant up there? That's a bit strange. But anyway, let's put these floats in here. So I need those and I'll just keep working on this and bringing stuff over. You don't want to see it all, do you? Well, let's show it anyway. Uh, I need a Simon initialize. Let's copy that. Now I'm aware that there's no semicolon on there. Uh, I could put that in my setup, I suppose. Paste it in there and put the semicolon back. What else? I think the only remaining thing is I need this Oh, and it's quite long. Uh, the Simon related stuff here, get humidity, get temperature, trigger a measurement. Yeah, let's take all of that, copy that. Now that's going to go in the loop, isn't it? So I could put that in there. That should be it. I'll try and compile that and see if it works. Well, of course, there's one other thing I need to do. I think I finished with that. So I'm going to get rid of that. And that is to send out my humidity and temperature measurements, which are HUMI and temp, and stick them in a couple of variables. Now, I think I8 and I9 are what are shown on the display as int1 and int2. They're integers. Now, of course, humidity and temperature are uh, floats, but I think I can cast them. So let's just stick a line in here and we'll have I... Eight uh, will be oh well is it simply Humi? I think it is, uh, and that should cast the float to the integer. And let's have i nine is temp. Let's see if that works. Oh yes, look here. Um, I've got int1 is 52, you might only just be able to read that, and int2 is 20. Now 50 was my humidity and 20 was my temperature. I'm just going to put my hand over the humidity and temperature sensor, get it quite close. And that's raising up. Now we haven't got the decimal points because I think when you cast a float to an integer, you just lose everything after the decimal point. But yeah, that's... The humidity is raising up, that's now 62, temperature 21. If I take my hand away, that should start to drop back. So I definitely think that humidity and temperature 
the floats are being converted to integers and they're coming over the data transmission as integers. So that's working. So what else can I do to this to sort of minimize it? Um, one thing I want to do is take off the radio enable ACK payload just to see if that causes a problem because it just adds to the complexity and for a simple simplex one-way communication I don't really need that so I'm going to cut that and oh, I've got a double semicolon there but I'm going to add it on the end here after the comment so that I know it's still there paste it in there space oh that's not space I don't oh I don't know what that was space in there and let's take out that second semicolon now I could comment out all this lot because I don't think I need to send all these analog values and I can comment out this the radio is ACK payload available and just see if it'll work with all those commented out let's have a look ah oh, no that's broken it this is uh, that's compiled and uploaded but this is no longer working the, you know the display is changing the battery is changing this is working but it's no longer receiving or transmitting and I've got a feeling it might be in the ACK payload thing so I'm going to leave it there for this video because it's got very long that's my basic transmitter the next thing I need to do in the next video is build a basic receiver with a display I'll need a, an I squared C display for that so I can stop using this wearable because I can't really modify the code in this. I suppose I could write to the Pro Mini, but I think I just want to leave this as it is. I'll build a new system for the, uh, the display, which I'm going to have in my office, probably build it on a board like that. But let's leave it there. That's good enough for one day. And uh, if I do any short updates, they'll go on my other channel sets. So uh, it, it is probably a good thing to subscribe to my other channel because I'm now using that to do short updates which fit in between the long videos that go on this channel. But there it is for the moment. I'm very pleased. This works with the TMRH20 library. That's really what I wanted to achieve and it works. So for the moment, cheerio.